Hi everybody, my name is Ronnie from the back and I am here with Pastor Luke Garrity. Uh, in today's session we're going to be going over the Holy Spirit and Scripture. And I am personally excited for today mm. uh, just because I love the Holy Spirit, man. I yeah. guess it's going to be great. So Awesome. Yeah, we're going to talk about, uh, I guess, a kind of a broad overview of the Spirit from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. We're going to talk about it in big terms, uh, kind of themes, I think, would be the way I would I would think about it. But um, yeah, you know, we're talking about when we first started brainstorming uh, this topic about how even in the book of Genesis, right, the very beginning, um, we see in verse 2 that the earth was formless. So this is Genesis chapter 1, very first book of our, of our Old Testament says that the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters and the spirit of god was hovering over the surface of the waters so in the very beginning of our bibles the spirit's present we already we already yes we already see the spirit yeah so it's it's not like a i think sometimes um some christians unfortunately uh kind of have this approach of like they don't really learn about the spirit a lot in fact there were there was a long time where people would kind of jokingly um, talk about how, you know, it was like the Father, Son, and the Holy Bible was the Trinity. Um, and the Spirit was oftentimes left left kind of unmentioned, uh, whereas, you know, Jesus obviously talks about the Spirit a, a lot. But but I love how in, in Genesis... Well, I was going to say, which is surprising to me, because if, yeah. if you read the book, I mean, it's it's hard to read a chapter yeah. in, in, say, the Gospels or something mm -hmm. where the Spirit isn't mentioned. Yeah, the Spirit isn't, isn't present, yeah. So you so you know you see in Genesis very beginning the spirit's present and then I always like to think about how in the book of Revelation the last chapter of Revelation um, we have the spirit and the bride say come let anyone who hears this come right so the spirit is present from the very beginning to the very end mm -hmm. uh, which makes a lot of sense because given our last topic we talked about the Trinity right the doctrine of the Trinity and how. There's one God who exists eternally as three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. So, of course, the Spirit is all the characteristics and attributes that we use to describe God the Father and God the Son is also true about the Spirit. So, yeah. So, I mean, what does that do for you when you think about just how prevalent the Scriptures are in mentioning the Spirit? Yeah, well, I, uh, okay, so I, I have a few a few for this, actually. One of them is in, I think, Matthew 22, mm -hmm. where he speaks of, like, the, the one eternal sin you could commit is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, yeah. He says any any other sin you are forgiven for, but that's yeah. one you can't be. Yeah. But I think that alone in itself holds just how much weight, mm. like, the, how serious, how personable, how... Um, just how much the the spirit should be recognized yeah right there yeah. off the bat and um yeah that's good so something else i would say is just like i mean you hear it in john 14 which we i think we touched on last time mm -hmm. but there's this common theme throughout the bible where the the spirit is connected to truth mm -hmm. so it's almost the light to the truth yeah you know yeah. and then, and then just um any anything else we can uh Ask for on a bad day, especially if our kids are bugging, mm -hmm. you know, grace, yeah, come on, uh, patience, <laughs> things like that. Yeah, so yeah, uh, fruit of know, the spirit, which, yeah, are all birth from the spirit. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't say enough um, to just how, how important I think mm. the spirit is to, to Christian, to Christians yeah. and to the Bible and just everywhere. So, yeah. So, you know, when we're thinking about like an overview of, we're talking about the Holy Spirit in scripture. Um, you know, our, new, our, our Bibles contain uh, two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And kind of the, maybe the simple way of, of thinking about the Old Testament is the Old Testament is the story of creation, the story of God um, having a relationship with people who were called patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then out of that, um, the nation of Israel comes out and God works in and through the people of Israel uh, promising that one day he would bring a, a Messiah or a Savior. Um, so the Old Testament kind of tells that story, right, of the covenant that God makes with with human beings and then with, with the nation of Israel. And then in the New Testament, we have uh, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which tell the story of Jesus. And then you have a bunch of letters uh, in, in the book of Revelation um, that were written to churches. And uh, so it's interesting when you think about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, we just said, hey, in the very beginning uh, in Genesis, the Spirit's present. And we also talked in the New Testament, the very end, the Spirit is present. Mm -hmm. um, so when I think about like having kind of an overview or a summary of what I see in Scripture regarding the Holy Spirit, there's a couple things that I think is really interesting. There's a story in the 
Old Testament. Um, and so, you know, God raises up this people known as Israel, and everybody, for the most part, knows the story of how Israel ends up in Egypt, and then they you know, end up in slavery. And then God raises up this um, this figure named Moses to deliver the, the people of Israel. And Moses foreshadows Christ, like he's, he's a pre- a pre-Christ in a sense, you know, because he's functioning in that role of like, you know, trying to like rescue them and, and deliver them. Uh, but once he gets the people of Israel out of of Egypt and they're wandering, there's this there's a story that's really fascinating where um, all these prophets and pre like these really, I guess, you know, like leaders of the community, spiritual leaders, um, the Holy Spirit falls on them and a bunch of them prophesy. And uh, but there were two that were unable to make it to that meeting. And is this one they were they reviewed as like uh, almost in a drunken state? Uh, that... No, I mean I think that what I think okay, well, we'll cut that. That's something else. No, you don't have to. You <laughs> that's, don't, you don't, that's a, that's an axe too. No, okay. this this yeah. is is a similar phenomenon in the sense that the spirit descends and falls upon this group of of spiritual leaders, and a bunch of them start prophesying, and then. Um, there's two, I believe there were two that were back in the camp that also received the the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit and prophesied. And and in the story, Joshua like sees that and he's so zealous for 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 the you know for the for the community of of faith and for you know being right religiously, he runs up to Moses and is like Listen, these two people, they started prophesying and the Holy Spirit was on them. And he's like, you need to, you know, basically he's like, you need to take care of this and rebuke them. And Moses makes this really interesting statement. He says, oh, that all of God's people would have the spirit and would prophesy. And so when I look at the Old Testament, one of the things that you see is there's this theme of promise. Like God is constantly promising um, that one day the world would be redeemed. One day the there would be a new covenant. One day there would be a, a different type of relationship between human beings and, and God. Um, and so you, you actually, I think that you see a big theme of promise, right? Where in like Jeremiah 31, in the book of Ezekiel, there's these promises that the, the Spirit would indwell people. Because in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit essentially came upon um, prophets, priests, and kings. It was, it was, you know, not, it was basically the super spiritual religious leaders that had a personal relationship the, the rock stars of the yeah know, the, yeah yeah the superheroes um but it, so it wasn't like every per person who's a part of the community of israel would have that same relationship so it's interesting in the old testament there's this big promise about one day this is going to change and I, like a really popular uh you know passage of scripture that uh says this is if you look in the book of joel oops, just passed it in the book of joel um if you flip to the book of Joel, and I, my fingers are so dry. Okay, in the book of Joel, yeah, whatever you got to say, man. Hey, I, I need some. Where it is. I need to. Yeah, like, uh, but in in Joel chapter two, if you look in Joel chapter two, I'm gonna take your word for it. Uh, yeah, it's hard. Oh it's a hard one to get to. You got the cool tabs though. I do have cool tabs. Only yeah. from the back with the cool tabs. Oh, look at that, Joel. Yeah, Joel. It says uh, so in the, in the very end. Uh, what chapter? Joel chapter two. Verse 28, uh, it says, Then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions. That's 28. So, uh, and then it goes That's on to say, I'll pour out my spirit. I was going to ask you, like, what? Uh, why do you think that is? You know, because uh, it seems like in modern society, like anybody can be blessed with the, the spirit. Yeah. So. so it kind of gets to the, the, the what I'm saying, the overview of, the, of, say, like Old Testament, New Testament. You know, as you're working over the arch of, of Scripture, you have these Scriptures that are promising. So you, I think Moses, when he said, oh, if oh, only if God would fill up everybody and everybody would prophesy, I think he was he recognized how there's something unique and special um, about having a personal relationship and a personal encounter with the Holy Spirit. He's like saying, oh, I wish everybody would have that. And then you have prophet after prophet after prophet through the storyline of Israel saying, one day God is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Mm -hmm. So you have two things happening, I think, in the Old Testament. You have re uh, promises and repeating of those promises. Um, and then you also have this growing anticipation. So I think like if, if I was, 
you know, alive during the day of Joel or, or Jeremiah or any of these prophets, um, you, when I would hear you'd those... Have been a tax collector. Yeah, <laughs> I would have been a tax collector. <laughs> 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 whatever uh but i would have been like oh man i can't wait for that day like that right. just sound the, all the promises that were connected to it your your sons and your daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions i'd be like man i can't wait for that i hope it happens soon so so you have these promises and then you have this growing anticipation within the community of of faith the, you know covenant keeping faithful followers of yahweh the god you know the god of israel um, we're like, yeah, bring it on. So that's kind of like, you see that, um, you see that repeatedly in the old Testament. And then when you see activity of the spirit, we, we already mentioned that the spirit's active in creation. We've mentioned how the spirit would anoint Kings and prophets and priests, um, to do, you know, mighty things. Uh, I think it could be argued that the spirit anointed, um, you know, during military campaigns to over overthrow, other nations. There, the spirit was active. Uh, there's also in the Old Testament, there's a portion where one of the clearest examples of somebody um, being filled with the spirit uh, were a bunch of craftsmen and artisans who were, uh, who were putting together and designing um, spaces of worship, which I think is cool because it means that like, I think that gives us, you know, uh, reason to see that musicians and painters and people who are, are part of the arts can also be empowered by the spirit yeah you can your musician God through come through yeah them. like it, it like the spirit can work through that so so again two key words from the old testament i think promise anticipation promise and anticipation big themes in the old testament and then we get to the new testament and jesus uh comes and lives this perfectly sinless life for the entirety uh, of his ministry on, on earth. And he talks a lot about the spirit, right? We saw, we saw the spirit was um, involved in, in, uh, in his birth, right? Um, and then we see that the spirit is uh, at, at his baptism, right? It, when he's baptized, uh, a, a dove descends from heaven. Um, and then you see Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, especially, he's constantly being filled with the Spirit, and he's constantly demonstrating the kingdom of God by raising the dead and healing the sick and, you know, casting out demons uh, all over the place. So those are kind of like your broad, broad uh, overviews. But then at the end of Jesus' earthly ministry, uh, he says, listen, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to send my Spirit to be with you and in you. And he promises that, right? And so uh, all of his disciples are like, all right, <laughs> let's go. I mean, like, what would you have thought? Whatever you say, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you would have been, uh, was, yeah, that's cool, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it would, I'm sure I'd have felt a little differently. Too. Yeah, so you have, uh, you have this promise, anticipation, and then Jesus begins to um, inaugurate or to... Um, initiate the incoming, the inbreaking of the kingdom of God into our world and our reality. And then he's crucified. And then um, what we read in the book of Romans is that the Holy Spirit, um, by the power of the Spirit, Jesus is raised from the dead on the third day. And so, you know, and then the disciples, I mean, I've thought about that a lot. It's like, you know, they just watched their Messiah get crucified. Um, a lot of them scattered and and abandoned him um and then like then these rumors start happening that that jesus is alive and then jesus right. shows him when he first shows up they're like that yeah it's not that's not even you mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's a, it's a, you're yeah. not even you <laughs> thomas is like i'll prove it yeah and jesus yes. is like all right and shows <laughs> yeah. him these holes in his hands yeah so so then the disciples gather together uh and they're praying and this is where we get to the book of acts in chapter two the holy spirit um, on the day of Pentecost is poured out and everybody who's um, in that room is filled with the spirit. And that's where uh, in Acts chapter two, what Peter does, because it's funny, like they all are start, they start speaking in tongues. Um, they're speaking in unknown languages that they didn't themselves know. And they're like, you know, I mean, I'm sure it was, it would have appeared chaotic to outsiders because all these people see it and they're like, are these people drinking? Like, are they drunk? Yeah. 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 Like, what's going on? And that's when Peter stands up in Acts chapter 2, and he says, he basically is like, listen, no, they're not drunk. 
This is I, a fulfillment. I bear of witness to it, and it it can get weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, so. You've seen. But he's like, no, this is a fulfillment of Joel chapter two, and he says that it will come in the last days that that God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh, and he he quotes directly from that passage in Joel as a fulfillment, and so that's the moment where um, what we see happen in the shift uh, from the Old Testament is the Old Testament. The Spirit of God was with God's people and would anoint specific people for leadership tasks often. Where in the New Testament, it, it transitions from not, not God just being with his people, but being in his people. And that's the radical shift. And so you have promise in the Old Testament, you have anticipation, and then you have fulfillment where God's people now have the indwelling presence of yeah, the Spirit. Yeah, you, you just touched on something that that made something else click in my brain but um you, you said that the 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 spirit raised Christ from the dead mm-hmm. uh, which essentially just says that like there's there's no Christianity without the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. like that's that's yeah. how important it is to Christianity yeah. like yeah I mean Paul actually says in uh first Corinthians uh he says that that no one can can profess Christ as Lord without the spirit mm. So, yeah, I mean, even people who may not even be as aware of or maybe focused on their relationship with the Holy Spirit, if they have if they've come to a place of choosing Jesus and and, you know, making a decision to follow Jesus, the Spirit's been at work, whether or not you realize it or not. Right. Which is, I think, really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's a lot of people who don't even realize how much the Spirit's been at work. Um, Not only what we're talking about over the course, the arc of of the story of scripture, but in our lives in general, God's at work. He's, he's always at work. Mm -hmm. It's kind of encouraging to me. So, yeah, so that's, that's how, and then, you know, and then, so you have Acts 2 where the, the disciples are filled with the spirit. uh, And then immediately they begin to go out and proclaim Jesus to their local communities, to their trans local communities. And then, um, you know, uh, within within 12 years, they are they have mission teams that are going out to the rest of the world, uh, who are being churches are being planted by these people known as apostles, who are who are sent ones or messengers, and uh, and Paul spends a lot of time in his letters writing about the Spirit and the Spirit's work in salvation, the Spirit's work in empowering people to be. Um, to you know, to be sanctified or to be more like Jesus, he talks about the spiritual gifts that we have to build up the church um, and to build each other up. And yeah, Paul is. Um, how would you say it for the the kids? He's like he's he's top dog. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a boss man. He's <laughs> lit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's we're old. Yeah, <laughs> so we we couldn't even we couldn't even come up with. No, the right I'm, I'm always in the Bible <laughs> Bible every time, and I'm like, man, Paul just like yeah. He's giving us all this information. Yeah, yeah he's, he's dropping the dimes. That's, yeah, that's, he's, <laughs> he's not. He's never capping. Yeah, he's, um, never, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. Or is he cap? Cap? I don't even know. He's no cap. Okay. He's no cap. Yes, he's, okay. Yeah. There you go. He's incapable of cap. Yeah. So capable capper. That is my. When I think about an overview of the spirit in the Bible, that's that's a very broad, you know, thousand mile. Up, look down, see the major themes. Uh, well, I, I like the timeline you get, kind of, kind of like a promise to the fulfillment. Because mm-hmm. I feel like there is like, and I think I think you explained it pretty well. There, because I don't, I can't touch on, but there is, there seems to be a difference between Old Testament spirit and New Testament spirit. You know, so that was a mm-hmm. good merger of yeah. Kind again, of and this is big for all of us is, um, you know, because there's places in the New Testament where. Where you know the the authors of the New Testament are like y'all don't even realize the um, that's how, what they said to yeah, y'all. <laughs> y'all. They, well, they'd say use guys, use guys, <laughs> use guys and gals. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they, in reality, there are these y'alls where it's it's in plural, right? So it's not like you as an individual. He's saying you as a collective church community, united by the Spirit, you live in a a. Uh, a stage of the redemptive story that is unlike the Old Testament. They looked forward to our, the moment we're in, you know, because again, in the Old Testament, God was with the people of Israel. He was with the community of faith. In the New Testament, he now dwells inside of us. And And so we are, we're the, you know, in the Old Testament, they built built a temple. Uh, They had uh, several temples 
that they would build. And before that, they had Solomon's temple um, or, or the, the uh, Moses' temple where it's this tabernacle moving. And that was where God's presence would, would be, was within this building. In the New Testament, it's like, no, God doesn't dwell inside a building. He dwells inside the temple of our hearts, the church. And yeah. it's huge. I mean, it's a huge shift in in uh, in how we experience God. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's probably why uh, prophetically, like it, it was it was the like the spirit would touch in the hierarchy, uh, so mm-hmm. to speak. You know, the 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 teachers and yeah and um, uh, rabbis and stuff was because back then, I mean, that it wasn't like reading and everything. It wasn't even common knowledge. You mm-hmm. know, these guys would they would travel around yeah and, and teach teach about uh, God mm-hmm. and and laws and everything of that yeah, nature. Yeah. So. I, I guess what I, that was a very long winded way of of saying like um it should, the word's so much more accessible to us now yeah that which is probably why I think some of us take it for granted absolutely you know like I was just I actually just this week I was in my room and in my bedroom I've got like eight Bibles <laughs> they're just like all over um, you know and I was like man I just have so much access and yet I don't know if I've uh, if I take advantage of that as much as I should, right? You know, because there are periods in church history where, um, and and predating church history, you know, going back into the prior to Jesus, um, the people of God didn't have access to Scripture in the way that we do. I mean, we have it on our phones, right? We have it everywhere. Right, yeah. They, I mean, they would they would yearn for a rabbi to come into town, yeah. you know, just yeah. to, to be in the Traveling, itinerant of teaching a, was a, a teacher. Yeah. legit legit practice. So so that's kind of why I referred to them as, you know, rock stars. They would they yeah. almost tour and, mm-hmm. and teach the word, and people would yeah. just be like, oh, man. Yeah. Um, that's good. Yeah, so that's, that's the overview. That's, that's good. So can you give us uh, just one more time the... Uh, well, you start, you know. Yeah. So, Old Testament. I'm was, glad. I'm glad you could tell from my hand gesture what I was here. talking about. Yeah. Yep. Promise. Slice of bread. Yep. Promise, and then growing anticipation, and then the Old Testament prom, uh, prophets would often restate. They're oftentimes considered covenant uh, covenant enforcers. Mm-hmm. That, right. The promise was part of a covenant. Anticipation. Prophet. Prophet. Prophet is constantly reminding people about the promise. And then uh, you have Jesus come, who continues to promise. He says, hey, after I leave, I'm going to send my spirit. And after he's crucified and raised by the power of the spirit, on the day of Pentecost, the spirit is poured out. And the church be, goes transitions from the community of God's people who had God's presence with them to the community of God's people who had God's presence in them. Yeah, so the, this That's is almost the... Uh... The, the big bang spiritually, you know what I mean? Yeah. The spirit just... Yeah, I mean, a lot of people have... I, I don't agree with this. A lot of people talk about how Acts 2 and Pentecost is the birth of the church. But the church is the community of God's people prior uh, prior to Jesus and after. I, I think that there's one one body is what Paul talks about in Ephesians 2 and 3. So not it's not confined like, in a wall. It's not like Israel and then there's the church. The, the church um, is connected to Israel and Israel is connected to the church. The community of God's people is my point. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, you you have Acts 2 definitely was a significant turning point for the church being an empowered and indwelt temple of God's presence to go out and to, and to share that presence with the world. So, yeah, so that's it. Beautiful. Beautiful.